Hi. Yeah, this time I'm not talking into a lamp. <laughs> uh, so, first of all, uh, I want to explain that when I was asked to speak on this panel, um, I told the organizers that most of my influences lately have been board games, which aren't non-games, uh, but I was promised that everything would be okay. Uh, so I apologize to those of you who came to this panel to get away from games. Uh, I'm going to be mentioning some. Uh, so, who am I? Uh, I'm Henry. I, uh, I've been a hobbyist game designer since I was a kid. Uh, before I made video games, I made uh, card games and board games, and then a lot of half-completed game-like projects in HyperCard. Um, then I, I was uh, uh, in the mainstream industry for, for many years uh, as a UI programmer, mostly at Bioware, uh, but also at Rational Games, um, because I think uh, user interface and user experience is incredibly important. Um, and uh, Last summer, I, I quit my job to go indie, and I've been indie since, since then. Uh, my first project is Space Team. Uh, briefly, uh, if you don't know it, Space Team is a cooperative shouting game. Uh, it's, it's a party game for, for two to four players who shout techno babble at each other until their ship explodes. Uh, each player has a, a phone or a tablet with a random control panel on it, like this. You need to follow time-sensitive instructions at the top of the screen. Uh, however, the instructions are being sent to your teammates, so you have to coordinate with them before the time runs out. Meanwhile, the ship is falling apart, and you're being chased by an exploding star. So I'm going to start by talking about influences specific to Space Team, and afterwards I'll talk about some other ideas I'm playing with and where they came from. The first influence is the only digital game I'll mention in the talk, and it's uh, Johann Sebastian Joust. And I feel justified including this game in the presentation because while there's a lot of technology underlying Doug's implementation, uh, you can almost play Joust with a wooden spoon and a lemon. <laughs> um, or a wooden spoon and an egg, if you're serious, maybe. Uh, but, but when Doug came to Montreal and I saw Joust for the first time, it blew my mind, because uh, he took this Wiimote knockoff that nobody seemed excited about and made a game that didn't use a PlayStation and didn't even have a screen, um, although you, you can argue that it has a, a distributed screen with seven large spherical pixels. Um, it seemed like cheating, uh, and I wanted to cheat too. Uh, the point is that the game isn't about the screen. It's about the interaction between the players. And, and in the same way, Space Team isn't about the control panels. It's about shouting and listening and watching each other's body language. Uh, yeah, I really like the, this uh, slogan from the old uh, Area Code studio in New York, uh, which says that they make games with computers in them, not the other way around. I thought that was really interesting. So, the, uh, so that was my first inspiration. The, uh, the second influence was uh, Kane's Arcade. Um, this is a, an arcade. Uh, with several different machines, all made out of cardboard by a nine-year-old boy. Uh, and as I, was, as I was brainstorming ideas for this project, um, a short film about this arcade was making the rounds on Facebook, and, and it really stuck with me. Uh, is a short clip. Uh, so he's playing these games like miniature basketball, and, and when you score a point, the kid would crawl into the box and pushes out these tickets from the side, <laughs> uh, just like a real arcade, arcade machine where the tickets come from the bottom. And you know, this guy who's making a, making a movie about it says he's, 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 he's a genius, and, uh, and, and I agree. It's, it's, it's a really cool arcade. It's actually, uh, it's actually here in LA. Uh, I've never had a chance to visit. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still there. I hope it is. Um, but I used to love making things out of paper and cardboard, and uh, this just got me thinking why don't I just build my own spaceship? You know, this kid can do this. I can probably do that. But the, uh, the real spark of inspiration uh, came in a dream that I had shortly after watching this, this film. Um, uh, so uh, this is the best uh, drawing I could do of the dream. It's, it's, it's a long time ago now. But, uh, but so my brother and I were wandering around this dark, abandoned warehouse filled with science fair projects that looks kind of like the game from Kane's Arcade, but slightly more advanced. Um, we sat down and started to play with one. He had a monitor, I had a monitor. Words would flash on his screen, and I would have to pick the matching word from an obtuse hierarchical menu on my screen. 
Uh, it was a terrible game, uh, but it was, uh, it was the seed that became Space Team. Uh, uh, I was also heavily influenced by Brian Laurie's hardware shop sketch. This is one of my favorite sketches, and it's too bad you can't hear the, the dialogue on this. Um, I'll try to read it as they're saying it. I'm not going to do the... So this is, this is this sketch where a man comes into a hardware store and starts asking for a list of items with arcane names, and the names get progressively worse and more ridiculous sounding. But, but, they're, but they're, it's hard to tell if they're actual hardware or not because there's a lot of weird names in hardware stores. So, um, so let's start again. Four felching pens and a beveled spill trunnion. Uh, I think we've only got one felching pen left, some of South Athens. I've got some frotting pencils, though. Will they do? You know the thrush plate? You can use the frotting pencil on that. Rude to the lookout valve on the pump spoke. Provided you remember to rim the satchel arm properly first. It's, uh, it, gets, it gets more and more ridiculous. Um, and they do it better than I do it. So, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's just a short clip. You should, you should watch the full sketch. It's on YouTube. Uh, so I, I, wanted to, I wanted to invent a context where I could just say words like that. Um, uh, and I was also working on a random name generator for naming planets and solar systems in, in a galaxy for another game. Uh, so I, I repurposed that to use uh, as the generator for the Technobabble. Um, and uh, the Technobabble was, of course, inspired by many sci-fi comedies, such as Red Dwarf, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Doctor Who, and Star Trek The Next Generation. And, uh, and if you don't think Star Trek is a comedy, uh, I recommend watching it with the understanding that Data is a super intelligent android with encyclopedic knowledge of human customs and idioms, and that he's actually feigning ignorance of these things in order to troll everyone. <laughs> uh, that lets me segue into this joke from the amazing webcomic LARP Trek. Um, you have to read this in, uh, in Data and Geordie's voices, obviously. Um, these are the last three panels of a longer comic. Um, <laughs> so, LARP Trek is a comic where the, the crew of the Enterprise uh, are role-playing the plot of Deep Space Nine, which, uh, <laughs> which in the comic is a fictional world invented by Geordie, who is their dungeon master. Um, it's, it's pretty hilarious, and if you like Star Trek, you should read it. Um, I think one of the reasons a space team, uh, space team appeals to people is that the, the techno babble seems so familiar because of shows like Star Trek. Um, uh, and Star Trek was inspiring for more than just the techno babble. Uh, one of the core elements of gameplay that I wanted from the beginning was for everybody to shake, like they were on the bridge and the ship had just been hit by a laser blast or an asteroid. Um, this, is a, this is a video uh, in which the camera shaking has been removed. Uh, apparently by applying image stabilization technology. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wanted to capture that moment in the game. Uh, <laughs> so I, I worked backwards and tried to figure out how I could make people do it. Um, and if you've played the game, then you'll know that you actually shake to avoid the asteroids rather than after you've been hit by one, uh, which doesn't really make sense uh, <laughs> if you think about it at all. Uh, but the wonderful thing is it doesn't matter. Uh, people will forgive all kinds of inconsistencies if they're having fun. And they'll even invent thematic justifications for your bugs. Uh, so, uh, so these were the, the non-game uh, influences for Space Team. Uh, uh, but there was uh, another big influence, and that was uh, board games. Um, the closest comparison would probably be Space Alert. Uh, Space Alert comes with a, a soundtrack with a 10-minute time limit and, uh, that you have to play while you're playing the game. And it shares a lot of the same chaos and humor as Space Team. Uh, you're all running around a spaceship solving problems and just trying to make things work. Uh, it's also much more complicated, as you can see. Uh, but, but it has some great mechanics, like if two people try to use the elevator at the same time, they'll bump into each other, one of them will have to wait, and it throws everything off. So, uh, 
so, but I'm also inspired by board games in general. Uh, I wanted to make a game where everyone had to be in the same room, uh, around a table or on the couch, uh, interacting with each other, not just their phones. Uh, and there are, there are some board games that just have direct ports to phone or tablet, and, and the game plays exactly the same as the physical version. Those are great, and we need those too, but I think there's so much potential in taking the social dynamics and emergent storytelling of board games and applying them to video games where you don't usually see that stuff. Um, I think we can use computers for the mechanical complex things and abdicate some of the control and storytelling to the players. Uh, for example, in, in Space Team, some of the rules are created by the player, such as are you allowed to touch someone else's screen? Um, I've seen people do this, and the other person will say, hey, that's cheating. Uh, is it? I don't know. The game doesn't, certainly doesn't make it explicit. I usually tell people it's cheating when I'm watching it. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's not a, it's not a like, predefined rule. Uh, so board games are also inspiring to uh, the new projects I've, I, I've got in the works, or I'm trying to, trying to work on. Um, uh, my next game is, is called Labyrinth, and it's inspired by some of the ideas in the board game Escape Curse the Temple. Uh, Escape is another cooperative game with a soundtrack, and it has you all rolling dice simultaneously to explore and collect gems before the temple collapses around you. Uh, it has a cool mechanic where one player can get trapped and the others have to come rescue them. Um, and so I want to borrow some of these ideas, uh, but make a game about uh, solving puzzles together with a tiny bit of uh, pen and paper style role playing. Uh, right now it just uh, assigns you a random character like plucky geologist or seamstress with a shady past. Um, and that will be worked into the puzzle somehow. Uh, but I also want to uh, sow a bit of discord among the players to encourage arguing and infighting. Uh, so I want the difficulty to come from the players themselves rather than the mechanics. And that's not something you see in traditional, traditional games uh, or video games. Uh, and then uh, my other next game uh, is called Ship Shape, and it's inspired by the board game Galaxy Trucker. Uh, in Galaxy Trucker, you each build a ship using these square tiles um, that represent thrusters or cargo holds or crew cabins, and then you fly your ship through various encounters, and pieces fall off, and you have to decide which part to keep flying. And again, there's a lot of chaos, and, and it's really funny when you fail. Um, uh, I love building ships in this game, and so I'm stealing that part and making a game where you have to keep rebuilding your ship as you explore a galaxy. Um, uh, which is very similar to uh, uh, Hermit Crab in Space, which I saw the other day, which, I, which I, uh, I'd seen before at Nikitis, but I'm glad that, I'm glad that it actually justifies the idea, so I'm excited about it. Um, I'm also trying to make it without any combat because that just seems like an interesting thing to do in a space game. Uh, here are some other simple games that have interesting mechanics and interactions uh, that I, I've enjoyed. I, I'm not sure they would translate directly up to video games, but I am sure that there are things we can learn from them and bits we can steal and uh, interesting experiments to perform. Uh, I want to see more digital games that feel like board games that I can play with my friends. Uh, I'll certainly keep making more, but I think you guys should too. And there are links to everything. You can probably find the slides online afterwards. Thank you very much.